Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna show you how to seal up the transfer case in a 3S platform car. In this one, we're gonna use the Big Rock because this is the newest one we have in the studio at the moment. And we've done the video on it and showed you how that works. Well, in the video, we mentioned how to seal this up and we've had questions asking us how that's done. In this video, we're gonna pull the transfer case out, motor and everything, and we're gonna show you how to seal it up to prevent that fine dirt and debris from getting into the gearing and causing problems in the long run. This won't be a very long video, guys, but it should be informative and I hope it helps. Check this out. All right, guys, before we get you down on the bench, let's show you what it is we're talking about here. And of course, that's the motor attaches to the transfer case unit here. And that's what I call it because it transfers the power from here to there. Transfer case, pretty simple. It's got the spur gear here, the pinion sits here, and the spur gear is on the slipper that goes through the transfer case to the front drive axle. So this is the front drive shaft that goes up to the front differential and it goes directly to the pinion in the back. So getting it out is, there's a little bit of a trick to it, but it's not bad. If you get a bunch of dirt and debris in there, it gets a little harder to get out, but it's not impossible. And just about anyone can do it if you have a little patience. Now, the thing is, on the bottom of this, there's an opening and it's about that big. And it's right at the bottom of the spur gear. And there's an indentation in the chassis itself where that all sits in and slides into place. Okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, the way it works and everything is good, but since it's an opening, the bottom of the chassis collects fine dust, dirt, and debris. And as you run, as you accelerate with this, when the car pulls this way, all that dirt goes right up against the transfer case. And there's a small opening there that allows dust and dirt and debris to get up into the gearing, get into the pinion, get into the spur gear, get into the slipper, and the bearing on the front of the motor, which is the one on the back side here. It's a small bearing and we've lost a couple of these motors due to that material getting in there and destroying the bearings. So sealing that off is a pretty necessary thing. In this video, we will show you how to get all the parts out, do the seal job and put it back in. Also, we're gonna be using duct tape or packaging tape. We won't be using painter's tape. This stuff doesn't really hold up, guys. And we're gonna look at this. This right here is HVAC tape. This is what they use to install your heating system in buildings and whatnot. And it's hot and cold resistance. And I have a piece of it right here just to show you how this works. On the back side, it's super sticky. It's really good, so it'll stay in place, but better than that, it'll hold shape without trying to undo itself. That's really nice because when you shape it to the differential or the transfer case, when you shape it to that, it won't fight to come loose and it's metal. So if you spray a cleaner in there, it won't affect this and it'll stay in place pretty well. Now, it is metal, so it's pretty easy to tear. It's pretty easy to punch holes in. So if you're gonna use this, guys, be really careful putting it in so you don't puncture it in any way so that it defeats the purpose of having it. The upside to having this stuff, and I'm not necessarily, I mean, look, any of it does work. The plastic stuff is best because it's resistant to water and all that stuff. But if you have a clear one, as dirt, dirt's the wrong way to put it, as the gears wear, so the pinion runs on the spur gear. Spur gear's plastic, generally they come that way and it's got a metal, a metal pinion. When those wear, they create dust. That's the parts coming apart as the, the units work against each other. That's how that works. It creates heat between the plastic and the pinion and it, it degenerates over time. That's why you take it apart and look and there's wear in there. Being on the bottom with this clear piece, pop it out and look and you'll see all that stuck to the adhesive at the bottom of this, which keeps it out of the gears as best as possible. So this is a great way to keep everything as clean as possible. It's not a perfect solution because you'll always have wear. It's not an oil differential where everything runs nice and clean like in a car. These are just toys, guys, so they're just small parts that will do the job. This solves that problem pretty well as far as keeping that stuff contained and keeping all of the foreign debris out of it. So let's get down on the bench and let's show you how it's done. So let's get this drive shaft out and it is a compressed shaft, so you need to squeeze the spring a little bit and then lift 
and then on the front you have to line it up good to get it to pull out these can be a little bit difficult guys if there's some dirt and debris in there so have some patience and they'll come out now we'll detach the wiring and get the motor free because this whole situation is going to come out in your hand here in a minute so gently unplug everything and I like to just get the wires out of the way so we'll just slip these up and move them aside all right now on the bottom here there's one screw that holds the block in that holds the diff the transfer case in place that block there sometimes you can pull it aside but sometimes you have to give it a little attitude there you go now right in here you'll see the tether or this is the clip that holds everything back so you want to lift that just enough to clear the stub in there so don't get crazy just enough to open it and then pry lightly forward with the screwdriver just gently like so and then just work it out real easy just like that real nice and there's your problem and it sits right down in that indentation now there's a rail there and up top there's another rail and that's what aligns everything so it goes in correctly and this divots where those gears sit so clean everything up have a good look at it and then let's get our material out. In this one we're going to use the aluminum stuff from HVAC and this stuff we got from our local hardware store. If they carry the stuff for doing heating and plumbing they're going to have this stuff guys. This is good stuff and it works pretty well but there's a trick to installation. When you put it in place it's going to fight you until you get it bent to shape. So you got to hold it in place, get it stuck down good on the sides. Do not push down on the gear area. You want it to float clear of the gears. So push around the perimeter, but not over the gearing. And it should look something like that. Check it, make sure it's not stuck to the glue. Perfect. That'll do the job. Now let's clean everything up and we'll do the, we'll reverse what we did before and we'll put everything back in. Gently set this in the pocket and then slide it back and then you'll have to rock the car back and forth a little to get the pinion to line up with the slipper. Check it for ease of movement and then let's reassemble the wires. It's nice that these are color coded. Okay, and we're going to put that block back in place and line up that rail and that rail with the rails down below. And that'll hold everything nice and tight and we'll get the screw back in it. There we go. And now let's get that drive line back in. These can be a little bit stubborn at times because that bearing floats and we need to hit that spot. So we'll get the front end first, line the bearing up with its brace and try and squeeze it back and get it lined up. Oh, didn't quite get it there. It's got to sit right in that bracket. There you go. Just like that. It does require a little patience. All right, so there you go, guys. That's how that comes out and is reinstalled. Now, as you build dirt underneath these gunnels where this slides in, it gets a lot harder to get out. Now, there are these nice honeycomb areas right here where you can get a screwdriver in there and pry gently that's the important part. Make sure that your tether up top, your latch is lifted and gently from side to side, work it out. Don't pry hard. You'll break things if you pry hard. You just want to work it a little one way, then the other, then back and forth, and you will work it out. Before you reinstall it, make sure you clean all this out. And here's a little close up of this for you. This is a plastic version of the same thing. Now, if you take a look here on the 3S platform cars, this is aluminum and it's red. Okay, this is off of a Mega, but it is designed exactly the same way. Same opening at the bottom. The back half is the same piece, no aluminum plate. Okay, not a huge deal. The Mega cars don't have the kind of power that 3S cars have. So you're gonna have a little bit of a difference there. Still, at the same time, this is the same design. And when you get inside of these things, guys, these hang on to garbage. So when you fish one in, let's put it back together here. Look where all of the debris goes. 
right there which sits on the bottom that's the problem motor mounts here covers all of these holes differential the slipper pops out right here where the driveline hooks on on the back this snugs completely up against the rear differentials input shaft so everything is sealed up real nice except that and i understand why that might have been designed that way so anything that builds up in here would come out but with the sag in the chassis the chassis right here there's this dip in it and this dip right here is a puddle if you think about it there's nowhere for anything to go if you drip water in it it'll sit in this spot because it's concaved it'll hold on to any debris that's in there and that's right where that opening is the problem with that is anything that works its way in there will also stay in there and it'll pull it up into the gears and that's where we have most of our problems once we started taping it off only the debris that comes from the actual gear mesh itself is all that winds up in there and as long as you do your regular maintenance when you get this thing run six seven batteries and you go and do a thorough cleaning on it don't forget to take this out don't forget to take it apart and have a look inside clean everything check the bearing on the front of the motor that's the one we always seem to lose prior to doing that but maintenance is always a thing check to make sure that it is still moving smoothly there's not a lot of rattle back and forth in the housing that'll indicate the bearings are starting to wear and if that's the case that motor is not going to last too long still at the same time with general maintenance and cleanup you can forestall any issues like that don't forget that when you build these and you put that tape on here don't mash it down tight on the gear that's in there you want to float over that gear a little bit leave it just a little bit of space mash down the perimeter but don't beat it into those gears because that is what you're trying to protect not stop from moving so it should work more like a little bubble over that hole seal down the edges really good but don't mash it down into the teeth that's really important guys so if you haven't already don't forget to bash that like button and help our content spread to others you know this is a response video we had the question how is this procedure done and we got right in the studio and built the video to help that's what we like to do for aj jam studios i'm aj saying keep wrenching guys mm -hmm.